Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Soft TV, the singer-songwriter series. My name is Anastasia Francis, and I will be hosting the first segment uh, for tonight. And for our first act, we have Kevin Matthews and Eileen with Silver. But there's nowhere else to run away to I need to take a breath There's nothing in the world to hold me And no one seems to care There's nobody home When I'm falling invisible to their eyes the Smiles have all but disappeared And I'm greeted with these lies Is there a silver lining in these clouds A sliver of hope to be had Is there a positive from these negatives Could to be made from bad Is there a silver lining In these clouds A sliver of hope to be had Is there a positive From these negatives Could to be made from bad Well I'm feeling like I'm running on empty with a thousand miles to go I'm looking up to the mountains and hills for someone to save my soul My head's been pushed down into the dirt strip of dignity and pride I'm blazing a trail on the highway to hell all alone for the final ride Is there a silver lining in these clouds, a sliver of hope to be had is there a positive from these negatives? Could you be made from bad? Is there a silver lining in these clouds? A sliver of hope to be had. Is there a positive from these negatives? Could you be made from bad? Like a fish out of water, drowning in air. Stretching out my hand, is anyone there? Kevin, that was very beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> so, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself before we start asking deep questions? <laughs> um, yeah, um, I've been uh, recording uh, music uh, for about 20 years. Wow, that's a long uh, time. Yeah, but actually I started writing songs when I was 15, so that's even a longer time ago. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, in the last... Um, uh, in the first kind of 10 years, in the 90s, uh, I, I released about five CDs. Um, I was fortunate enough, uh, my first CD, I had a number one radio hit uh, called My One and Only. Uh, this uh, is a song I've been hearing so much about, and uh, you're actually going to play this song yeah, for yeah, us tonight, aren't you? Uh, for, for especially for Leslie. <laughs> <laughs> for Mr. Soft? <laughs> yeah, Mr. Soft, yeah. <laughs> Special request, yeah. Special request, okay. So... That song that you just played was called Silver. Silver, yeah. Would you like to tell us a little bit about that song and what inspired you to write it? Yeah, um, the new album, uh, which is called Emo Fascism, uh, was actually written uh, during a quite a dark and difficult period in my life. Okay. And, but, you know, uh, Silver really was about 
how that despite you know all all the difficulties there's still a silver lining ah. so that's i mean the chorus really is what is there asking the question you know is there a silver lining is there a sliver of hope you know so like no matter what you go through the difficult circumstances you have you must always hold on to hope and look for that silver lining to you know to carry on living and to move forward with your life wow that's very inspirational <laughs> i personally that was the first time i heard that song and I really liked it. I like the tone and I like the lyrics a lot. I'm very big on lyrics, so I found your lyrics very interesting. Thank you. Uh, I'm just wondering, so all these lyrics that you write, do you are you into poetry or how did you start writing all these beautiful lyrics? Um, well, I started songwriting mainly because uh, uh, I was a big fan of of you know of rock music in the seventies, of course, when I was okay. growing up. And, and my biggest inspirations were uh, uh, people like the Beatles and, and Bob Dylan okay. and, and, you know, and the Birds and, and all that. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, in, in terms of lyric writing, uh, it's just basically I'm, I'm, I'm a massive sponge, right? So I just absorb whatever I listen to and I listen to a lot of stuff and, you know, it's like 30 over years of listening. So that's a lot of music to listen to. So it really does come out, uh, uh, in the influence does come out in my writing as well. Yeah. I see. That's very interesting. And you mentioned that the first song that you wrote, uh, you actually wrote when you were 15 years old. Yeah. yeah. What was that song about? Was it uh, about some girl that <laughs> broke your heart? <laughs> uh, it was just an exercise, remember, because a friend of mine, who, we were in the same band, he kind of came to me that day and said, hey, look, listen to this. I've just written a song. And obviously, you feel very jealous. I can do better than yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> and very competitive. So I remember <coughs> that night when going to sleep, I couldn't sleep because I had this tune in my head. So I couldn't, you know, get anywhere to record it. So I actually took out a melodica. Ah. You know, that's something you can blow through. And I wrote that first song. I think it's called My Love. Oh, right? but it's it's so a horrible sweet. song. So it's a horrible song. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a horrible song. It's my first song, so it's probably it's terrible. <laughs> I've never recorded. I've never sung it. Yeah. yeah so but, yeah. that was when you were fifteen years old. That's when I was fifteen. Yeah. And uh, and had you picked up the guitar yet at that point? Yes. Yes. I, okay. I started playing the guitar at the time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, wow, that's that's a uh, very interesting. My love. <laughs> yeah, love, yeah. 15 years old right what else do you write old. about yeah what else is there to write about yeah. yeah and what's the second song that you're going to be playing for us tonight yeah so I'm going to play uh, this song is called uh, Beyond the Ashes and okay. the song is uh, really a breakup song um, okay. but it's more of a breakup of a platonic relationship a friend who huh. is like no longer a friend so right. uh, someone who I was very close to and then suddenly overnight she's no longer my friend kind of thing so <coughs> that's, this song is really trying to express the, the, you know, the confusion and the you know, frustration that is evident in, in, in that experience. Yeah. I see. <coughs> and would this song be part of the second album, Emo uh, Fascism? No, actually, uh, it's, it's sorry, already, I mean, Silver and Beyond the Ashes are both on Emo Fascism. Emo Fascism, yeah, yeah. right, that's right. Okay, so here is Kevin Matthews and Eileen with... Sorry. Beyond the ashes. <laughs> Beyond the ashes. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. How and why are on my mind The answers I hope to find You're a blur in the distance Creeping slowly beyond the ashes I let your love go Second guessing every thought Every instinct that I fought Now you're totally out of my sight Creeping slowly beyond the ashes 
I let your love go Moving slowly beyond the ashes I let you go And as you dive into the spotlight Slowly fade away. Yeah. No one really needs to know about the hurt that will never go away. Momentary lapse of reason Accusations of treason Now you're forever on my horizon Creeping slowly beyond the ashes I let your love go Let you go Edging slowly Beyond the ashes I let go That was beautiful. Thank you. Beyond the ashes. Yeah. <laughs> right, so a question that I would like to ask you is, well, we've heard... Um, the stories behind the first two songs. Yeah. What is the reason um, that you called your album Emo Fascism? Why is it called Emo Fascism? What does it mean in, uh, to you? Okay, um, the actual simple reason, I mean, there are a few reasons. The, the first simple reason is that it's actually uh, a name I borrowed uh, from uh, the original album titles from one of my favorite songwriters is uh, Elvis Costello. So uh, on his third album, um, it was sup originally supposed to be called Emotional Fascism. Mm. Then he changed it for whatever reason and called it Armed Forces. <laughs> so I've always liked <coughs> that name. And also because uh, the first album that I released under the, the group name Watchmen was called Democracy. So I just thought, you know, it'd be interesting to <laughs> contrast it with something that has fascism in it. But I just thought fascism, it, it's in itself just a bit lame. So, <laughs> so I... I wanted to call it emotional fascism, but just to update it a bit, and I basically call it emo fascism. And of course, it's got a lot of emotional songs. And so the fascism bit is that, you know, um, I mean, I always feel that in a, ro a lot of relationships, um, people get very fascistic about feelings. Yeah. So you're not supposed to feel that way, or you're not allowed to feel that way kind of thing. So that's kind of what it's about, I suppose. Yeah. <coughs> and how many songs are there on this on this uh, recent uh, on the CD there are 12 songs 12 songs <coughs> yeah. okay <coughs> yeah. what is your songwriting process um, songwriting process um, well in the past it used to be I uh, used to write lyrics first okay um, and then I'll try to put like uh, music on top of that but in recent times I've kind of switched it around and I find that uh, I come up with a song for us uh, the music for us and kind of determine the, the, the emotional uh, the content of what it would be and then based on that concept I'll start to write lyrics okay yeah so a lot of the recent ones and especially the newer songs uh, like, the <coughs> like the next one I'm gonna do uh, is, is kind of more closer to that concept yeah okay that's um, okay that's very interesting <laughs> for me as a songwriter myself I've always found it easier to just write the lyrics first mm. and then come up with the music later mm. on. Mm. So yeah. perhaps that's how all songs start. Like they start in your head, but yeah, yeah. one way or the other. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Eileen, yeah. she's very quiet over there. <laughs> 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 so <laughs> I'd like to pass her a microphone. Oh, 
Thank you. Surprise! Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> so how how did you start playing with Kevin? Um, well, I guess basically I have always been a fan of his songs, and when I saw in the newspapers that. Uh, he has come out with a new album. I just had to go and watch his his his, his performance. So I, I met him for the first time real life at Red Dot Museum. Okay. So he was performing there with his band. Yeah. So um, then, uh, so I, of course, I have to go up to him and introduce myself. Hey, yeah, 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 <laughs> Mylene, you know. Yeah. So then, then he got to know that I should play the violin as well. Yeah. So and I guess he had in mind that he wanted, you know, for his next album yeah. to be something more instrumental. So yeah, that's how we we got together to to do this acoustic setup. Yeah. And, and how long have you been playing the violin? Um, I've actually been playing the violin on and off ten years. Okay. Um, I, I picked it up, um, well, really started to practice when I was in university. Then, um, but I, only, I left my daytime job about a year ago, so now I'm actually doing music full time, so playing the violin every wow. day. Wow, very yeah. brave. So I'm very, <laughs> well, in, in a way, I'm, I'm very fortunate that, um, you know, as, as musicians, if you are able to, yeah. you know, do your passion every day, it's, it's, we, are, we are considered very fortunate. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> thank you, Eileen. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> So, Kevin, what's the next song that you'll be playing for us? Uh, yeah, so this is the new song uh, that will be on the new EP. Uh, this is, should be out next February. Uh, and the song is called, uh, I Want What I Can't Have. I Want What I Can't Have. Yeah, I'm so tempted to ask you what it's about, but I think we should all <laughs> listen to the song and then we'll ask him later. <laughs> okay, okay, here we go. Okay. The closer I get, the more I forget how dangerous you are. Your crush in my heart can't get it to start. How could this get so far? I try to run away. But my feet are made of clay And the older I am The harder it is to pretend That I can be a better man You brighten my days Then leave me in a haze That I can barely I try to hold you near, but then you disappear, and I won't let go, and I can't give in, cause I want what I can't have, and I won't let go, and I Borrow and steal And I won't let go And I can't give in Cause I want what I can have And I won't let go And I can't give in Cause I want what I can have 
you. <laughs> As usual, beautiful. I think I'm now like a huge fan, a huge fan of Kevin Matthews, and I'm gonna go and download all the songs on iTunes. <laughs> so, I was asking you this before we started um, the interview officially. But where can we get your songs? Um, um, a few places. Uh, Emo Fascism is available uh, at iTunes. Okay. Uh, you can also stream it on Spotify. Um, and uh, you can also download uh, Emo Fashion and some other songs as well at Bandcamp. It's basically kevinmatthews.bandcamp.com. I mean, that's, that's the main place. Uh, I mean, you can search for me on SoundCloud or so you can find some songs there as well. Yeah. So basically everywhere on the <laughs> internet. <laughs> <laughs> everywhere that is, that is you know, possible to hear music. <laughs> so softies, if you guys would like to check out Kevin Matthews music and have it in your iPhones or your... Non iPhones. Sorry, I'm an iPhone user. <laughs> Just go to all the sites that he mentioned earlier, and uh, you can find them there. So, would you like to tell us what made you write that song that you just played for us? Um, well, it's it's kind of about a, a relationship that's wrong. Um, that you know in your mind that this is not right, uh, but you feel so strongly about it that you want it anyway. I think that's all I can say about it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's kind of what is inspired by that that tension and that conflict. Of, of so that was it's something that it's of, of, of course it's personal too. To yes, you. it is personal. Yeah. Okay. So it's kind of like that conflict of wanting something that you really can't have, and it's you know the head versus the heart kind of thing. Hmm. Yeah. I've noticed that all the songs that you've played for us so far uh, have been very personal songs. So you've written them all from personal experience, basically. Yeah, mostly. Yeah. Okay, and just curious, would you happen to have written any songs that are outside of, of, of your personal experiences? Uh, yeah, of course. Um, when I first started um, 20 years ago, mm -hmm. I decided to do something that was different from everybody else and write songs about Singapore. Ah. So the first song that I ever had on radio is called Orchard Road. Okay, yeah, Orchard Road. You can Road. find it on the band cam and if you search on YouTube, you can find the, the music video which was done by Eric Koo. 20 years ago <laughs> and it's a very different Orchard Road to what this looks like now <laughs> yeah. so I've written songs like um, I've written a song called I Love Singapore as well uh, I've written a song uh, that's about chewing gum right, so that's quite a popular one when I do live yeah, so yeah so those are the songs that I do which are um, not really personal songs but more observational songs about things around me and things like that yeah. okay so that's interesting you've actually got sort of two sides to your music yeah. So, observational stuff and then yeah. the personal stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would like to actually go and take a listen to the Singapore stuff and see what it's like. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, um, because um, you know, during the, the the launch gigs that we did, we did one at uh, the Esplanade Outdoor Theatre. So there are quite a few recordings on YouTube. You can find them. They're not videos. They're kind of like they're actually uh, audio, audio recordings. Audio, yeah. Okay, so but they're on YouTube. They're on uh, YouTube. Yeah, you can find some parts. So you can find some of the recordings. Okay. So have you ever played like at National Day or anything like that? <laughs> With all these patriotic Singapore no, songs? No, no. I don't think so. <laughs> kind of outside of all that. You know, I've always been kind of outside of, of uh, sort of the mainstream and things like that. Yeah. Even though I've had a radio hit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that would be my one and my only. My one and only. Yes. And you mentioned earlier that you spent, I think, 10 years without writing anything or producing any music. Oh, I did. I did. It's just oh. that I didn't release anything. You didn't release so, anything. Yeah. Okay. So I was, yeah, I was still writing and, and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so I'll no just release play them live or whatever. Like, but I've never record, yeah. Are you playing live anywhere now? Um, uh, the next one we're doing is lowercase in November. Uh, but we're doing quite a lot. I mean, the other uh, the backing band I have, which I call the Groovy People. The Groovy People? Yeah, the Groovy People. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we're doing quite a lot of gigs in August and... Uh, more August and, and a bit in September, but like uh, it's a bit, bit quiet right now. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, you know in Singapore, unless you play covers, uh, yeah, you know, it's difficult to, to to get regular gigs, and that's always been my experience because I refuse to play covers. I have so many songs when I want to play covers. And I personally, I think your songs are great. Thank you. <laughs> I would love to go to a gig where I could listen personally to just original music by Singapore artists. Yeah, and we do we do have that. But not enough, obviously. Not enough. Yeah. So, in your opinion, what can be done in Singapore to sort of propel the 
music industry forward and um there are a few things obviously uh you always need uh something that comes out from the grassroots uh so therefore you need to kind of educate our kids uh I, i'm a teacher I okay. teach in, uh, teach in teach? Polis, uh, Republic Poly. Republic Poly. And, okay. Uh, yeah. So, uh, can you imagine him as a teacher? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, back, to s- back to school tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, it, yeah. So that's actually a very important uh, um, uh, demographic, so to speak, right? To, to kind of reach out to, and I find more of them actually uh, getting to know more local artists, and a lot of them are also because I teach music there, so. Mm-hmm. A lot of them also have uh, their personal ambitions about being a, a musician and, and artist and things like that. So that that's very much going in the right direction. But we also need uh, probably a bit more uh, relevant kind of government uh, support. I mean, there's been very good support recently uh, from NAC with the <coughs> grants for EP recordings and things like that. Uh, but I just feel that uh, much more can be done and... Uh, you know, maybe on more p- media platforms, the official media platforms. Uh, I tried to get beyond the ashes onto radio here, but they said it's not good enough for them. We don't agree. <laughs> if you're yeah, listening, they, we they don't agree. Told Sorry. Me that they, they, they <laughs> reviewed it and they thought it was not suitable for radio. Ah. Huh. Well, I tried. Well, that's fine because it's on YouTube now and everybody's <laughs> going to love it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay. So. If you could maybe give a message to all the younger musicians in Singapore, you know, if you could say something to them, what would it be? Um, I mean, the, the main message is always, uh, you know, if you love music and, and you're passionate about music and you can't think about anything but music, then do music, right? But if you don't, then please don't do music. You know, it's either got to be all or nothing as far as I'm concerned. And um, that is the way... I mean, it's not only just music. It's just it's any any artistic endeavour. Okay. It's got to be kind of all or nothing. And that sometimes is very difficult in Singapore because we're always taught that you, there's no such thing as all or nothing for the arts. <coughs> yes, that's very true. Yeah. And in Singapore, standards of living are, you know, are yeah. high. Yeah. Everything is expensive. So I think that... I- it's a very real fear. If I go into music full time, yeah. what if I don't get gigs for the next yeah. four months yeah. or I get one gig a week and then how am I going to sustain myself, right? Yeah. So your message to these Singaporeans would be just go for it. Yeah, I mean, there are some people who are doing it. Uh, people like Charlie Lim, uh, Inch Chua, uh, the Sam Willows, mm-hmm. uh, they are doing it uh, full time. They're giving it a proper go. They are more like, like Kevin Lester, uh, Mark Bonafide and all these people. So, right, we just need more of them. Okay, yes. So that's a very inspirational message. <laughs> <laughs> what is the next song that you're going to be playing for uh, us? Okay, so the next song is uh, uh, the radio hit, the one that people love and and people always have nice <laughs> comments about it. Is and this for uh, Mrs. Soft? This is a special <laughs> request? <laughs> special request, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, you know, recently I was at some, <coughs> some event, corporate event, and I was talking to some guy and then he was saying, Oh, you know, I, 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 your song was like a coming of age song for me, kind of thing. You know, I mean, that kind of, because for a lot of people, especially if they're 12, 13, I know a lot of people who come up to me and say, no, that's the first uh, radio song that I fell in love with, or that's the first CD I ever bought, and things like that. And so, you know, if people ask me, you know, do you, you know, I don't get tired of, of singing that song. No, I don't, because I know it means something to people. You know, you know if people want to listen to it, why not? You know? So what is that <laughs> song about? Um, it was actually written um, in 1983. Okay. Right? Like 30 years ago. Before and I was born. <laughs> 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 and <laughs> what I used to do back then, um, uh, and I was like courting my present wife, um, I would used to like do kind of mixtapes for her. Oh, that's and so sweet. And then I used to do mixtapes of stuff that I wrote. Okay. Boyfriends, all the boyfriends <laughs> listening to this, husbands learn this. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, so that's how it, it came about. I just kind of sat on the piano, and um, I was actually very influenced by this Marvin Gaye song called uh, "Wherever I Lay My Head." Uh, that's my home, uh, and it kind of came up from that. And uh, I mean, the original piano recording is horrible. <laughs> it's really awful, and uh, <clears throat> and kind of slowly developed from from there. And I mean, it took me ten years to record it. 
but you know I mean even to this day people still remember it things like that so I guess it's kind of you know something that's stuck in people's head yeah <coughs> My one and only. Yeah. Okay. And you mentioned that you've recorded six albums altogether. Yeah. Which would be your favorite, your personal favorite? Um, I think it's the latest one, Emo Fascism. Okay. Mm-hmm. And what about the one that's going to be released? Um, that February? one's really, yeah. I mean, that was more of an EP, so it's okay. like only going to be four songs. But uh, I mean, I don't know how it's going to turn out, but I'm really looking forward to that because like I said, I'm going to bring in uh, collaborators and, and contribute other contributors. So I'm really excited to hear how it'll sound and, and, and you know, how people will respond to, to the song, the new songs especially. Yeah. Who are some of the people that you're working with for, uh, th- for this EP? <coughs> well, besides this lovely lady here, of course, uh, Eileen, uh, also uh, working with uh, Randolph Ariola, okay. uh, who uh, has, you know, he's pretty well known in the, the local scene here. Uh, then uh, there's this um, percussionist, calm bass player called Andy, Andy Young. Uh, oh. So he's going to be doing some percussion. And also, uh, because I'm also a, a band manager, so one of the bands I manage is called Cheating Sons. Uh, they've been quiet for some time. Uh, so the other guy I'm bringing in which is uh, Donovan Lowe, who's, who plays a lot of instruments, multi-instrumentalist. He plays banjo and lap steel and bass and everything. Yeah, so these are more or less the people and I'll probably bring in uh, one of my, because I'm a, a <coughs> mentor under the noise, NAC noise program. So one, the first, my first uh, mentee or apprentice is this, uh, this girl called Rachel Teo. She's also a great singer-songwriter, so I'm going to get her in to do some backing vocals as well. Yeah. That's about, I think, I'm, and probably maybe one more person on cello is uh, one of my, the last... There's this group uh, called Anecdote, was the last mentees uh, for Noise, and this she's the lead, one of the lead singers, and she also plays cello, so I'm also trying to bring her in for to play cello as well. This EP actually <laughs> sounds like it's going to be so <coughs> awesome because I you've got so, so <laughs> many so many people <coughs> working on it with you, mm. and all the accomplished musicians. And yes, yes, very yeah, talented. We're gonna look for, uh, really looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. So all of us have to wait till February to hear that. Can yes. we hear snippets anywhere? A little. Sneak previews? Um, well, I, what I did was that I've actually, what I've done so far is record the basic tracks. So I have like a, just a squeeze of guitar in my voice. Okay. Uh, so th- that's, what, that's the one I've circulated amongst the musicians and trying okay. to get their input and things like that. So I think uh, what I've done is I've put a, kind of a sampler of that rough mix online. So it's like just one minute of each song. Okay. Yeah, so that's online now. Like little uh, teasers. Yeah, little teasers. Like on SoundCloud, I think, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and are you going to be having some sort of a launch party or something? Um, for your I haven't decided EP? yet. Yeah, I haven't decided yet. Uh, probably no CD this time. Okay. Uh, probably it's just be a digital only release. Uh, but I'm um, trying to maybe get onto the Mosaic program next year. Okay. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. I guess. Yeah. Okay, and now we'd like to listen to your my one and only. My one and only. If that's yeah. okay. <coughs> yes. So everyone, here is Kevin Matthews and Eileen on my one and only. No, I won't be lonely With my one and only As I can see forever Feeling her in my arms She is so lovely Yeah, my one and only And we will be together Never to be apart She belongs to me
her As long as she's in my arms She is my lady Yeah, my one and only And what we have is special That is deep in our soul She belongs to me And I can only see That's the best to see Yeah, I would go crazy Without my one and only yeah. what I just said <laughs> I said I can see why this song is so popular and one thing that I experienced personally sitting here listening to you is I can actually feel the, the joy that you feel when you're playing yeah. and I think that's so important because I feel that Kevin really feels it when, when, when he plays and you can see the emotion and yeah it's just it's it's very very nice, and I think that's so important in a musician. It's the, probably the most important thing that something that you probably will never forget. Yep. Do you have any parting words for our audience tonight? Well, I just want to thank uh, Soft and for uh, James and Leslie. Um, known James for some time now, and uh, uh, always felt that he's you know he's such a genuine and warm person, and uh, you know we always need people like that. To, to to help us and to support us, <laughs> you know, in the scene. So it's good, right? We because love you, I, James. yeah, because I always I always say that you know I love music people because when, when we get together we are the same wavelength. You know, we we just it's just for the music and we're just interested in the music. It's always so fun. So I'm really thankful. Uh, thanks to James and Leslie for having us, and thanks again to to Eileen for sharing it, uh, sharing with me her incredible talents. Uh, so it's uh, it's amazing for me to to hear these songs, to sing these songs and hear that violin go on, it's just, you know, spine tingling uh, for me as well. And uh, yeah, so, you know, it's, it's all good. It's uh, really thankful to be able to do this. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> so it's been such a pleasure hosting the legendary Kevin Matthews <laughs> and the beautiful Eileen on violins tonight. My name is Anastasia Francis. Thank you for listening. Uh, thank you for listening. Stick around. We have two more acts coming up, so don't go away.